to the UBC Wiki. UBC Wiki is a collaborative space for creating and sharing resources which can be used for teaching and learning, research, or community engagement. Just like the Wikipedia, all of the resources and information that are created are viewable by public. Contents are also easily editable by anyone who has a campus-wide login. So if you find an article that is outdated, you can always go ahead and edit the article using your campus-wide login. Due to its nature, it's a great tool for creating an open course or setting up a resource repository. In this tutorial, we will go over 5 steps to getting started. First, log in and familiarize yourself with the UBC Wiki environment. 2. Familiarize with view history and watch list. 3. Create a profile and familiarizing with the visual editor. 4. Adding images and upload an image. 5. Create a new sandbox page. So let's get started. The first step is to log into the wiki. Click on the CWL login button to log into the wiki. Now enter your CWL username and your password. You are now logged into the wiki. Welcome! Now you are able to create a new page, edit an existing page, and upload an image. Now let's take a look at the UBC Wiki. UBC Wiki uses the same technology as Wikipedia, which is MediaWiki. So if you have used Wikipedia before, you will find there are some similarities to it. Pages on UBC Wiki are divided in four parts. Main, which is for articles specifically related to UBC. For example, page about AMS will be for main space. And there's course. Course is for pages that are course-based content or activities. Mass 101 will be an example. And then there's documentation. Documentation is a space to host a how-to guide or resources such as how to create an e-portfolio in UBC blogs. And finally, there's Sandbox. Sandbox is an experimental space. It is a place to experiment or add things like notebook. For example, testing visual editor in UBC Wiki is going to be in Sandbox. Remember that even sandbox of the content you created on the wiki are public. So let's take a look at the wiki page as an example. So this is one of the wiki page. There are text and images. If you look at the view history, you can see that there are multiple people working on this wiki page. If you click on the username, you can see the profile of the user. Every time a user makes a change and save, it is recorded on the wiki like a time machine. If you click on compare select revision, you can check what contributions has each user made. Let's say if you made some changes to the wiki and made some mistake, you can always revert the changes by clicking on undo. Also, going back to the page, if you have a wiki project that you are working on and if you want to be notified, you can click on the star mark, which is the watch list. When you put the article on watch list, you will get email notification over time when someone contributes to the article. For your email address, the default is the email address you use for the CWL, but you can change your preferred email address through preference. Okay, now that you are familiar with the wiki, the third step is to create a profile. Creating a profile is a great way to give other people a bit of information about you and your role at UBC and in the key community. So for example, let's take a look at my profile. I have a picture of myself, a brief summary of myself, list of projects that I have been involved in, and my link to social media. Now I'll go through the steps on how to create a user profile. From the top menu beside the human icon, click on your username. In my case, I already have my profile set up, so I would be clicking on edit. If you are a new user, click on create. This is what's called the visual editor. Formatting in UBC Wiki are composed of wiki text or wiki markup, which is like a simplified version of HTML. So if you click on wiki text, you can see that my profile is actually composed of wiki text. If you are more of an advanced user, you can edit the page directly from here. I will go back to my visual editor by clicking on edit. Now I'm just going to delete the content of the page once to explain about the formatting in Visual Editor. So this is the editing screen. I'm just going to type the content. If I want to bold or italicize the text to emphasize certain part of the text, I can do so by highlighting the words and click on the A on the formatting bar and just click on bold or italic. Now my text is bolded. If I change my mind, I can revert the edit by highlighting the bolded text and click on the same formatting I did before, which is bold. 
Same goes for italicizing the text. You can highlight, italicize, and if you don't like it, you can just revert. Linking a text is also easy. You just need to highlight the text and click on the link icon. If you want to link to an internal wiki page, you can do so by typing the title of the page. If I want to add an external link, click on external link and type the URL of the page. Just like the other formatting, links can be edited or removed easily. So if I click on the link, I can click on edit or remove the link by pressing the clear button. If the text of the page is getting too long, you can add a heading to the page. Adding a heading not only makes your page look nice, but it also makes the page user-friendly and accessible, especially to those who are using a screen reader. To add a heading to the page, type the title of the heading, highlight the text that you want to make into a heading, and then from the part that says paragraph, and from here, click on heading. Now I have created a heading, and if you press enter, you can type a paragraph under the heading. You can also add a subheading. If you highlight the text and click on subheading, that will create a subheading. There are also other features on visual editors such as adding bullet points, adding reference, and adding tables. You can also insert images by clicking on insert and then clicking on media. You can search existing images on UBC Wiki and Wikimedia Commons by typing a keyword on search. For example, let me find a picture of the cat. Images upload on UBC Wiki and Wikimedia Commons are either Creative Commons license or public domain, so as long as you respect the license rule, you can use the image on the UBC Wiki page. So this is a Creative Commons license image, so I can use it on the Wiki page. So I'm just going to click on use this image. So if you add an image, you will have to type in the caption and alternative text. Caption is basically to explain why the image is relevant to the content you're creating, Alternative text is very important to make your image accessible. It's basically you are providing text for people who are using screen reader or text-only browsers. In alternative text, you'll be providing information on what the image is about. So if you click on insert, you have just inserted an images. Now, if you can't find the images you are looking for, you can upload your own images. You can upload your own images by clicking on media, click on the uploads tab, and click on here. Please go here to upload media and press here. Or from the left sidebar, under tools, there's a link called upload files. So I'm just going to open this in a new tab, and then upload my own images. There are conditions to uploading your own images. And here it explains what are the conditions to upload the images. So I'm just going to upload my own images. Click on Select Media Files to upload, and look for the images you have created. So in this case, I'm the sole copyright holder in this work. So the default is Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 license. So this means anyone else can use and remix my image as long as they attribute and license the remix image as share alike. And if I prefer to release it in different license, you can click on Use a Different License. So I can make it into public domain where people don't have to attribute my work and release it. Or you can make it into Creative Commons where other people can attribute the work but they don't have to release it under the share like license. So for me, I'm just going to use the default license. So I'm just going to add the description of the images so that when people find my images, they find it useful. I've created the work today, so I'm just going to click here. If I want to make my images more findable, I'll just type in categories and click on next. Now I've uploaded the images. If I want to insert the image, I can just copy this and then go back to my own page. I'm just going to remove the cat flat for now. I can just paste it here. And if I want to edit the position of the images, you can do so by clicking on the image and click on edit. And you can edit the caption and click on Apply Changes. Now I have the images on my profile. If I want to save this, I can click on Save Changes. You can add a summary to describe what you have changes. So if you're collaborating with multiple people, it will be useful. So now I have created my user page. Now that you're familiar with UBC Wiki, we are going to create a new sandbox page. To create a sandbox page, go to the main page, 
scroll down and to how to use this wiki and to create a new sandbox page, just type in the title of the page that you want to create and then click on create sandbox page. That will automatically start the sandbox page. And right now it's in wiki text mode, but if you click on this pencil icon and click on visual editing, it will go back to the visual editor mode. So I'm just going to type a content and press save. You have now created a sandbox page. This page is public so you can share this link to your friend or coworker. Now you are done. Thanks for watching the tutorial. And if you need more help, you can go to help and support and look for other documentations. You can also contact lt.hub at ubc.ca if you require any support. Mm -hmm.